Okay, so the question is describing uh, uh, power arrangements in a room. So let me draw a, a simple circuit diagram for this. So I'm going to draw the diagram with a battery, knowing that it's not technically right because um, it runs on AC. But we could, uh, for the purpose of power calculation, we could uh, treat this as running on a battery of 110 volts, and it won't be too wrong, um, other than, you know, it's an AC <laughs> current, uh, so AC voltage source, not DC. So the way all the appliances and any power, um, the electrical, layout is set up is it's set up so that all the outlets are parallel to the um, parallel to each other so when it describes a small refrigerator that runs with a current what it's describing is okay i have uh, some unit that draws a current connected to 110 volts and other elements are now going to be in parallel to this refrigerator so this is drawing some current, IR, and there's a lamp that contains a 100 watt bulb. So there's a lamp. So I'll just uh, write P2 or sorry, PL as um, indicating the amount of power that this lamp uses. And we have to compute some other quantities and an overhead light with a 60 watt bulb. So there's an overhead that's drawing some power. PO, um, and various other small devices adding up to, okay. So I'm just going to draw a black box that indicates uh, all the other stuff, um, et cetera. This is going to P, uh, yeah, I think I can distinguish my E from L. So that's the basic arrangement here. So the part A asks, what is the total power used by the dorm room while the refrigerator runs? And it looks like I'm being given all the numbers, um, all the other numbers in terms of the power. So I need to calculate the power used by the refrigerator. And for that, you use the, the uh, basic relationship for between electrical power, voltage, and current, which is electrical power is current times the voltage, and I think I went into that depth in more depth last Friday. So refer to that if you need it. Um, so just plug in the numbers, um, 110 times 1.5. That should give me, uh, can I do that in my head? Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, wow, that's, wait, no, it's not that high. So it should be um, 165 uh, watt. I mean, it's the largest of all the contributors. So uh, for the answer here, you just add them up. Uh, so uh, 335 watt. <laughs> Let's see if I did this correctly in my head. If not, I'll just start using calculator. This apparently, oh, okay, it's close enough. Um, so it says, assuming that the power plant for the electricity is 11 kilometers away and uses this gauge of wire that you've seen before, how much power is dissipated in transmission? Remember to count the... Oh, so for the transmission, that distance is going to be not 11 kilometers, but 22 kilometers because there's the line that's coming. I mean, it's not going to directly come to the house, but to the house, and then there's the return portion. So we'll have to deal with double this distance. Well, uh, how much power is dissipated in transmission if the power plant is directly providing the 110 volts? Okay, oh yeah, this is, uh, you have to be careful here. So the mistake to make is to, okay, so let's say you calculate the resistance of the copper wire. And if you just blindly use this formula, P is equal to V squared over R, the answer you get there will be wrong. <laughs> and the reason it's wrong is because the voltage of 110 volts, that's not the voltage drop across the wire. That would be terrible. Um, 
So if the power plant is directly providing the 110 volts, then what you have to look out for is, okay, how much current is needed to maintain this 110 volts here? So you work out, okay, the current that the power plant is providing to this whole household circuit is the amount of total power uh, divided by the voltage at which it's providing this. Um, so you need to work out that first. Once you have the current, then that's what you can use to calculate how much power was dissipated in the wire. You can calculate that with my uh, power dissipated in the wire is the current squared times R. There is a way to use this formula if you want to, but the way to do it would be to using this current and the resistance you calculated, figure out uh, what's the voltage drop across the wire and use that. It's complicated. Um, so this is one of those scenarios where one expression for power allows less opportunity to make a mistake. So here I would just use this expression because then once you correctly calculate the current, then there's no real room for mistake. So um, it looks like I need a current um, and the resistance. So I, want to do, I don't really want to do this in my head. So let me, <laughs> so I think I need to, to figure out the resistance of the copper wire. Do I have a resistivity? If the hint gives it, I'll use it. If it doesn't, then I'll look. Wait, I looked it up before. So, um, I mean, so it's in this table. If you need to look it up again, resistivity of a copper wire is this, but I think I already put it in as my variable row. Yeah, from a previous question. So let me just reuse that. And what I will need is, um, so, I need to update my rule. Um, so that the length is now double the um, distance that the power plant is away. So it's going to be two times 11 times 10 to the power of three meters. Uh, that's the distance. And the area will be, um, oh, area won't have changed because it's the same gauge. Uh, diameter 11.684 millimeter. So, so let me just update the length. Um, so this is one of the benefits of using SageMath. It remembers quantities and you can um, reuse some of the things you've already had. So updated the length. And so this quantity would be the resistance. So let me put this in as the resistance and make sure the number is reasonable about 3.45 ohm. So now I need a current. My current would be the power, 335 watt divided by the voltage, 110. I'm putting this dot here so that it does the floating point calculation. It just looks nicer to me. So power dissipated in the wire is the current squared times the resistance. Um, so 31.99 watt. 31.99 watt. It's pretty large given that the power used by the dorm room is 300 watt. It's almost 10% of the power. And, uh, and that really goes to the part C where we do the calculation slightly differently. And this is the reason why we use AC power. Um, so the most common way to increase the efficiency of power transmission is by using higher voltage uh, for long distance transmission. So you can almost see it in this expression here. So if you are looking to deliver a fixed amount of power, that's given by current times voltage. So given fixed P, the higher the voltage is, the lower the current can be. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we are going to talk about Faraday's law and how that's used for um, the, trans the transformers <laughs> that transforms one voltage to other, another uh, rather efficiently. Um, so for the purpose of this calculation, this is what we would do. So it says, uh, assuming that the same amount of power calculated in A is transmitted, how much power is dissipated in transmission if the power plant provides the power at this high voltage. So 
what we first need to do is given how much power we need, so that's going to be the number we work out in A, 335 Watt. So it's going to be provided at a current I times voltage. We are told the voltage here, figure out how much current needs to flow through the wires. So the current will be the power divided by voltage. Oh, yeah, same expression we had. But we are dividing now by much larger uh, voltage. So if you look at the, oops. So if you look at the number, the 335 watt divided by 110 kilovolts, so e, uh, 10 to the power of 3, it's a much lower current of uh, 3.05 uh, milliamp here. So we did that updated the current, the rest is the same for the amount of power. Um, so let me put this into current. I, you see that? And, and this is why I prefer to use this expression for calculating the power dissipated in a wire. When you change voltage, when you change other things, um, this is just the, has the relevant quantities of the current and the resistance. So as you change the parameter so the current changes, just plug in the updated number for the current. So our power is still I squared R. The resistance hasn't changed, current has, and I have the updated number in the variable now. So amount of power dissipated, much smaller. Um, it's one, minus one, two, three, four, five. Three point two times 10 to the minus five watt. So this is really the, uh, the numerical version of why we use AC power. So for the purpose of uh, power transmission, high voltage is much more efficient. Uh, there's uh, less power dissipated in the wires to transmit the same amount of power. Um, and uh, I, I guess that alone maybe doesn't explain why we use AC. It's that fact plus the, um, the fact that it's easier to transform voltages for an AC circuit than a DC circuit. With a DC, the, I don't even know if there's an easy way to do it. Um, yeah, so it's a lot simpler with the AC, as you will see in about a couple of weeks. So.